Good morning, friends. How are you doing? Uh, thank you for checking this out. This is going to be the youth sermon net. And of course, because it's me, I need to have something to draw on. So if you have a piece of paper, you can grab a piece of paper because what I would like to do is draw for you a story map. Now, there's a reason for this. It's because this morning the reading is from John chapter 11, which is the raising of Lazarus. However, the story isn't quite about Lazarus. And it kind of focuses more on the journey that happens with his sisters. And what I would like to do is connect the story of the sisters to the story that we have going on right now. And that's why this is going to be called How Their Story is Our Story. Now, this is pretty simple, but this was a story map that was developed by a guy who was paying attention to stories across all cultures. Joseph Campbell came up with this, and I'm going I'm to tweak it just a little bit, but you'll see. Every story has a main character, right? And every story has the main character going a journey, and then they usually get back home again, right? But in every major story, this could be Pixar, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Lion King, most of them have a main character that then, at some point, has a new world happen to them. They're used to this, and then a new world gets thrown on them. And for a bit, it feels disorienting. They're, they don't know what to do with the brand new world as they experience it. And so once they get through the disorienting, they go look for a mentor. This could be somebody that can speak to the new world. It could be somebody, but most often the mentor is somebody that they don't expect. The mentor is somewhat a little odd is not the usual teacher or the first teacher they usually come to. But then, there's a gift that they get. Could be Arthur's sword. When he pulls it from the stone, he now has the ability to become King Arthur. It could be almost any one of the things that happen in the Marvel movies. They all find the gift that helps them defeat the enemy, right? However, after they get the gift, they realize that it comes with a cost. They get the gift, but they realize it costs them something. They have to give something up. But then, they do this. Conquer and return. Right there. So the hero's journey, loosely, is this. They conquered the situation, and they return back to their world where they're changed. But they can encounter that new world as if the new world is their new norm. Okay. Now let's use this to talk about Lazarus' sisters. And let's also use this to talk about what's literally going on right now. All right? It's pretty simple. Okay. Oh, you know what? There's two of them. Lazarus' sisters. They're thrown into a brand new world when they realize that their brother Lazarus is dying, right? And for a while, they find this very disorienting. They, they are very concerned. And so they go on a look for Jesus. But Jesus ends up being the one that can give the gift, but he does it in a rather unusual way right? It comes with a cost, the lesson that they have to learn. And for Mary's and Martha, Mary and Martha, the, the sisters of Lazarus, they find out that Jesus is the Savior that they didn't quite expect because he shows up a little late. Lazarus dies. And as a result of that, they have a cost to the whole situation of saving their brother, they have to experience grief. And you know what? This is an unusual gift, the healing of their brother, because 
in the midst of all of it, they find out that Jesus gives the unusual gift, the gift that they didn't quite want, but the gift that they find out eventually that they really needed. Jesus isn't just the Lord of health and sickness. Jesus is the Lord of the resurrection and the life. And that's actually what happens. John chapter 11 has one of the seven I am statements of of John's gospel. You know, where Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Well, in chapter 11, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. So after they get their brother raised from the dead, rather than just being healed, they then return back to their world with their brother Lazarus. And it's a brand new world where all of a sudden Jesus is more than just a rabbi and just a healer. He's, he's more than that. He is the resurrection and the life. Okay. But I did say that this was going to be called how their story is our story. Let's talk about the world we're going through right now and connect their story with ours. We... We're in a life situation, and all of a sudden, we've been thrown into a brand new world. Wouldn't you agree? And, and many of us, including myself, find this brand new world that we're living in a little bit disorienting. We don't quite know what to do with this because this is like brand new territory. This is a place that we've never seen before. All the old rules are gone, and so now we're asking, what are the rules? What should we do? And so now some of us are looking for a good mentor to speak into this who can save this whole situation, right? But in the midst of all of this, there might actually be a gift, but it's a gift that comes with a cost, and it's a gift that might be confusing. Let's actually add that. Uh, Confusing. The coronavirus is incredibly dangerous for particular people, right? Those with already pre-existing conditions. However, this might present us with a particular gift that we didn't know that we wanted or needed. And it's going to come with a cost because a lot of our lives are completely shaken up as a result of this, just like the sisters of Lazarus. Our lives have been completely shaken up, but maybe it comes with a cost because the gift in the midst of all of this is we have the ability to reevaluate so much of our lives. And maybe in the midst of all of this, we actually come across realizing the same lesson that the sisters did. Jesus is more than just the Lord of health and sickness, but the Lord of the resurrection and the life. And so in the midst of all of this, we might find ourselves conquering over this situation, which I believe we will, but we're going to enter into a brand new world. And we can't go backwards to how things were. We have to keep moving forward with the new lessons that we've come through from this current situation. So let me finish with just a few questions, and then we're good, all right? Where are you on this story map? Maybe you recognize that it's a brand new world. Maybe you're feeling rather disoriented currently. Maybe you're looking for somebody that can speak into it. And maybe you're trying to figure out what is the costly gift of this whole situation. I'm not sure if the majority of us are here yet. But the thing is, we're all on this journey together. And there's good news in that. That's somewhat a part of the gospel. The body of Christ experiences things together, not in isolation. Granted, we're in different homes, but we're all in this together. And maybe that's one of the costly gifts. Well, maybe. You might have a different one. But I encourage you, please, pray for one another according to where you think you might be. And not only that, talk it out with other people too. Because I have a feeling by the end of all this, we might just end up realizing Christ is the unusual gift, mentor, savior that's Lord over even this, the bigger issues than we could have ever imagined. So we're done. As usual, I usually finish Sunday school by saying you are brilliant, you are intelligent, delightful, and you have paid attention so well. So let me say, may grace And peace be with you. Be well.